My name is Gino da Campo. I am a chef born and raised in Italy. For Italians, the most important thing in life is food. Let me show you how mouth-watering ingredients have shaped my home country. That's one of the best things that I've ever eaten. Join me tonight as I get a taste for Italy's essential oil. It's got character, it's got a passion. Uno, due, tre. I just can't believe my eyes. Now this is out of order. This is not a woman, this is a superwoman. And I create a sensational Sunday lunch. This is what a carpaccio is all about. This is my Italian escape. As an Italian, I love to explore my homeland in search of places which I hope will inspire me. So, I'm visiting Puglia, a region where centuries-old tradition meets modern-day Italy. If you look at the boot of Italy, Puglia forms the hill of the boot. Today, I'm on the Adriatic coast, near the city of Bari. Bari is the bustling capital of the Puglia region and is an industrialized port and university city. Along the coastline is a wide, flat plain and with the cool sea breezes from the Adriatic, Conditions are perfect for growing olives and producing olive oil. They got everything here. They got the sun, they got the wind coming from the sea. Everything is nice and flat. This is paradise as far as olive oil is concerned. There are estimated to be 60 million olive trees in the region and they thrive on hot summers and cool but not cold winters. As a result, Puglia produces 40% of Italy's olive oil. I am visiting this traditional masseria or farmhouse because I want to take a closer look at the amazing olive trees that produce Italy's most famous oil. For any Italian, especially for a chef like myself, Olive oil is the most important ingredient when you create a dish. Especially with a savory dish, you will realize that it always starts with olive oil. This plantation dates back to the Romans, who were the first to commercialize olive oil production. But some of these trees were already growing wild before that time. Corrado Rodio is the seventh generation of his family to look after the 1,000 tree olive grove. He's showing me his most gnarled and characterful specimens. This one, the old boy, is over 3,000 years old. I'm speechless, and that is very rare. This tree has been here before the Roman Empire. Yes. It gives me goosebumps. Yes, yes me too. You know? <laughs> Can I touch it? Yes, yes. Sì. It's like touching history. I can't believe that it's still here. Con quel punzone lì c'è un satellite. Corrado tells me that this tree is protected by a rather clever tracking device. He just told me that there is a metal badge down there which is linked to a satellite dish because they need to make sure that the tree number one doesn't get stolen and most importantly, nobody cuts it down. So this is really protected by the Italian government to make sure that nobody does anything with the sea. Olive trees are one of the oldest types of tree alive today. Their trunk and branches may die off many times, but the tree's roots always remain alive and sprout again, which is why they can form amazing shapes. Look at this tree. Natural sculpture. Of what? I'd like that you find. You want me to guess yes, the sculpture? Yes, yes. Corrado, 
I can't see anything. Look, there is a, a woman body. I don't know what kind of women you've been out, but I don't see any woman here. Yes, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a woman, no? <laughs> ah, and this is the bum bum. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Corrado, Corrado. <laughs> You're a typical Italian man. Yes. You see women yes. everywhere. Yes. Unlike me, to miss the figure of a woman, I think the sun must be affecting both of us. We need to cool down and sample some of Corrado's extra virgin olive oil, made from green olives. Okay. You have to take a little bit and take a... And suck it. Yes. Okay. <coughs> it's good. This it's is good. good. Because, it's good because yes. it's got a little bit of peppery yes. in the back of the yes. throat, like a little bit of pepper. Yes. yes. It doesn't feel greasy. This is the reason why I like, you know, extra virgin olive oil comes from Puglia. Because it's got character, it's got a passion behind yes. it, and I really like that. Yes. I'm gonna go for a second. Cheese. Yes. Salute. Oil from green olives has a spicy taste, but when the olives mature and turn black, the flavor mellows. This grove has given me an idea for a beautiful recipe using two types of olive oil. My dish is carpaccio of beef with the Italian garnish gremolata. I'm kicking off with some seasoned beef. Whenever you have to fry, whenever you have to sear, whenever you have to cook, what you need is an ordinary olive oil. So get your ordinary olive oil and drizzle all over the beef. It's not worth using extra virgin olive oil for frying, as you lose that fresh olive flavor. I'm covering every side of the beef before searing. Make sure you got yourself a hot frying pan and start to sear the beef all over. You sear the beef about a couple of minutes on each side. This is my version of gremolata, starting with flat leaf parsley and garlic. What makes my recipe different is that I replace lemon zest with capers. Also, my gremolata isn't the standard dry garnish. Mine is wet. The reason why it's a wet gremolata is because I'm gonna add extra virgin olive oil and lemon juice. And of course, always keep an eye on the beef. This is exactly what you want, look. Nice light brown and carry on with the other side. Now, the only thing that you have to do is to chop away. I could use a blender here, but I don't want a puree. I want my gremolata to have a rough texture. Once you learn how to make gremolata, you will lose it over and over again. Oh yes, I'm happy with the beef. Let it rest for a good three to four minutes and carry on with the gremolata. Now, what we need to add is a good squeeze of lemon juice. The sharp lemon will cut through the rich extra virgin olive oil. And I have to season it. And this is the consistency that you're looking for. So it looks like a roughly chopped pesto. Now is the time to slice the beef. Just like that. Now, can you see? All nice and sealed outside, but yet rare in the middle. This is what a carpaccio is all about. The beef should be thinly sliced. And while it may look very rare to British eyes, Trust me, it will melt in your mouth. This is the kind of dish that you would find usually on Italian tables, especially when it's on Sunday. Cover the slices of beef with a wet gremolata, just like this. All I need now are some fresh rocket leaves, dressed, of course, with extra virgin olive oil and lemon juice. And the last ingredient is shaved Parmigiano Reggiano. You can't beat a good Parmesan cheese. 
Let's see, this looks good. Beef carpaccio with gremolata. Now, this is the dish that you should have in Puglia. It couldn't be much easier. A fantastic way to make the flavor of the olive oil sing. I want to discover more about the food of Puglia. So I'm going to an ice cream parlor in Bari Old Town. Ice cream was introduced to Italy in the 17th century. Since then, Italians have built a global reputation for being the best ice cream makers. This parlor produces traditional flavors, but as food innovators, they are also experimenting with savory varieties. Buongiorno. On the menu is a gorgonzola and walnut ice cream. And as a chef, I must try it. Nice, thank you. For you, it's good? I think it's too strange for me, it's too different. Can I try something? Can I try the one with the olio d'oliva, the olive oil one? I prepare for you. Italian ice cream has more taste than British ice cream, as it's made with less fat. Come on, Italians are supposed to be masters at this. This looks like a meal. It's not an ice cream, it's a bit of a lunch. Yes. Olive oil ice cream and Parma ham is a surprising combination. You definitely get the flavor of the extra virgin olive oil. I get the little pieces of olives in yeah. there. Slightly sweeter. I like it. Thank you. I Thank think you. it's a good one. See, this is interesting. I like it. But I'm going to go for a chocolate ice cream. Okay. Thank okay. you. For me, you will never beat a traditional ice cream in a cone. Fantastico. Thank Grazie. You. Ciao, bello. Ciao. Coming up, the local pasta makers teach me a thing or two. Sbagliato. Wrong. She said the first one wrong. <laughs> and I'm cooking something very close to my heart. This is Italy. This is what Italy is all about. I'm in the region of Puglia, and I've come to the capital, Bari. The oldest part of the city has a maze of medieval narrow streets and I'm told that what they do in one of them is rather special. I'm searching for women in the middle of the street making handmade pasta. I actually never seen it before, but I know that they are around here. The local women specialize in making their own distinctive pasta, orecchiette, meaning little ears. Bari was once a very poor area. So this regional pasta is made without eggs. Water is simply mixed with glutinous semolina, which bonds the dough together. These ladies certainly make it look easy. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Angela Laspella is happy to show me the traditional method of shaping orecchiette. This is like a machine. It's beautiful the way she does it. I think I'm going to ask her if I can make some. Cioè, è possibile fare delle orecchiette? Fai vedere come come si fanno? Sì. Tieni. Here goes my reputation. Yeah. She said, off you go. Prendi il coltello. Ok. Questo qui? Sì. Yeah. Taglia. Gira. Gira. Taglia un pezzetto. Taglia un pezzetto. Vedi? Ok. Devi schiacciare e sollevare. Schiacciare. Devi schiacciare e sollevare. E sollevare. Sbagliato. Sbagliato. She said Taglia you need to push di... and you need to lift. <laughs> wrong. She said the first one wrong. Poi yeah. schiaccia e devi sollevare. Poi schiaccia e devi sollevare. Niente ancora. <laughs> da quanto tempo che fai le orecchiette? Eh, sette anni. Con mamma che ti mettono insieme. Da quando c'è di sette anni? Sette anni. Io ci vado a sette. Mamma mia. My one, they look rubbish. Really, really bad. I wonder if she's going to be politically correct with me. Wait. Eh, cosa ne pensa delle mie orecchiette? Male. Male. Ecco, ma male, male, male. Sono un po' male, però toglie orecchiette buone. 
This is the most embarrassing thing that I've done in my life. This woman is telling me off that I can't make a particular shape of pasta. She's making this look so easy. But this orecchietta is a nightmare. It's a pure nightmare. I've got a blinding idea which will put Angela's skills to the test. I've just asked her if she can do it blindfolded, and she said yes. I want to see this. Ready? One, two, three. Now this is out of order. This is not normal. This is not a woman, this is a superwoman. Bravissima. <laughs> this is incredible. I don't know if I should uh, carry on staying here or leave right now. <laughs> I want to cook a dish using orecchiette, but there is no point in using mine. I'll be using the expert variety. It's Angela's pasta with broccoli and fresh tomatoes. The first thing that you have to do is to boil your broccoli. So get your broccoli and they're gonna go straight into boiling water. I'm adding a fair amount of salt for a good reason. This is exactly the same boiling water that we're going to use to cook pasta. Leave it in there to cook for two minutes. In the meantime, what I'm going to show you is how to prepare your garlic. Slice it roughly, just like this. You don't want the slice to be too thin because otherwise they're gonna burn very quickly. Another way to stop garlic burning is to start it off in a cold pan with the olive oil. Time to switch it on. Red chili adds a kick. I've taken out the seeds. Very soon, garlic and chili are gonna start to sizzling the olive oil. The broccoli are ready and they're gonna go straight into a bowl with very cold water. This stops the broccoli cooking and keeps its vibrant color. I want to cook some sweet cherry tomatoes until they break up. I got my beautiful little ears here, the orecchiette. So straight into the boiling water, just like that. Make sure that you turn the pasta around. And I don't know if you realize, there is one thing that I haven't done, is to add olive oil into the water. That is absolutely useless. You're wasting your money. I'll tell you why, because the oil is gonna sit on top of the water. The pasta stays on the bottom. So what's the point of doing that? To make sure that the pasta doesn't stick, you need to keep the water boiling. Now is the time for the broccoli. Pick them from the water and make sure that you give them a good squeeze and that then roughly chop straight into the sauce and now it's time to season with plenty of salt this is the perfect vegetarian dish it's light it's healthy it's colorful this is italy this is what italy is all about Make sure that whenever you cook pasta, it's nice and al dente. Drain the pasta and it goes straight into the sauce. All the pasta must be coated with the sauce. And have a look at this. I mean, you already have the colors of Italy in the pan. The white of the pasta, the red of the tomatoes, the green of the broccoli. I'm happy this is ready to be served. Look at that. The best of Puglia in one plate of pasta. Beautiful to look at, easy to make and full of flavor. A perfect pasta dish. Before I leave Bari, I want to check out the harbor area. The old port is where the hip young locals come out to play. It's eight o'clock in the evening here in Bari, and I'm really curious to find out all these people behind me. You know, the kind of things that they drink, you know, what do they eat? I mean, after all, this is the capital of Puglia. I just don't want to know what's going on. There is a buzzing atmosphere as people relax in the cool of the evening. 
What's happening here, all these people? All these people come here every day with birra and uh, panzerotto and enjoy the... This is Bali lifestyle. This is very vibrant, yeah, yeah, yeah. very rock and roll. Very rock and roll. Very rock and come roll, on. yeah. Grazie, grazie. Ciao. Ciao. To find out more, I get the lowdown from the local barman. He just, I just asked, you know, what's going on here? What are all these people? They said, this is uh, the Italian happy hour, the barese, the bari happy hour, where people come here, they have something to drink, and they have these uh, uh, sandwiches with tomato sauce and salami, you know, spicy. He says, the, the spicier they are, the more they drink. Um, and then the panzarotto, the famous panzarotto, which is the deep fried pizza with ham and cheese and mozzarella. Posso venire a bella birra un bel panzarotto? Come no, prego. Eh va, grazie. Grazie. A voi. Salute. Buona serata. Ciao, bello. Ciao. I think I could get used to the Barese lifestyle. This is what I like about Italy. The good weather, fantastic scenery, happy people everywhere, amazing foods, drink. What do you want more from life? My time in Bari is almost over. The region is moving forward and I hope the traditions that make it so special continue to live on. You can find all Gino's mouth-watering recipes and more in his accompanying book, Gino's Italian Escape, out now from all good retailers. Some incredible stories and a reunion that no one could have expected brings another surprise surprise when Holly's here on Sunday at 6.30. Still to come tonight though, Piers Morgan's joined by Gloria Hunniford as the new series of Life Stories continues at 9. Before that, can Haley put the past to rest now her son is back in Weatherfield? We're in Coronation Street, next. Music